Ontario's COVID-19 cases topped 2,100 today, with variants of concern playing an increasingly larger part of that case count. Meanwhile, today the Ontario government announced that it's loosening some of the restrictions in its color-coded framework. As of Monday, Hamilton will be joining Peel and Toronto in the grey zone. That zone will look a little different, with hair salons and other personal services allowed to reopen effective April 12th. Outdoor fitness classes in those zones will also be able to resume come Monday. All the while, ICU cases are quickly escalating, with more than 400 people currently in those beds. The government needs to... Uh, change their course immediately. The color-coded framework has failed to protect the hot zone regions. Case numbers are rising, but more importantly, ICU admissions are rising. And we know that's a lagging indicator. And it's likely because the variants are more infectious and probably more deadly. Yet effective Monday, religious ceremonies and funerals and weddings will see capacity limits increased to the number of people who can maintain two meters of distance. That's among other changes to the lockdown measures. We should never, ever let our guard down. Uh, but in saying that, uh, there's through the chief medical officer and the local medical officers, um, we're, we're loosening it up just a little bit. What I want people to do, you know, is, is just to follow the, the protocols. That, that's absolutely critical. Don't be having people over. That's where the, the problem starts. If you start having parties out, you know, at your house and, you know, so on and so forth as the weather uh, warm, warms up. Uh, so we're, we, ha we should all be on high alert. But some frontline health care workers, like critical care physician Dr. Michael Warner, say the provincial government should be taking the alert status more seriously. As ICU bed counts continue to climb close to Ontario's peak of 420 from mid-January. What I do know is that the only thing that has been effective in reducing numbers in wave two was the stay-at-home order. Following this color-coded framework, hasn't worked at all. Which is why Warner is fearful he and other physicians will soon need to start using the short-term mortality assessments, essentially determining who gets access to life-saving medical interventions and who's offered only therapy or palliative care. It's a real enough possibility that every hospital in the province has been asked to learn how to use it, to create a triage committee, and be prepared to use it should the government deem it necessary. Now, Health Minister Christine Elliott said one of the reasons physicians haven't had to use those forms is because the province has increased capacity across the entire hospital system by 3,100 beds. Still many question whether or not the province's vaccine rollout plan can outpace the transmission of variants of concern. In Mississauga, Christina Howard, City News.